Hoover High School Honors Chemistry. This is Lesson 11 on Avogadro's Number. So what is a mole? A mole is this very long number that you see right there of anything. So think of it like a dozen. What is a dozen? Well, we often think of a dozen eggs or a dozen donuts, but you can have a dozen of anything. It means 12, right? Could be 12 anything. It could be 12 cars. You could have a dozen people. You could have a dozen books. So it's just a word that, that represents a certain number. Similarly, a mole represents this very long number. Uh, it could be of anything. You could have a mole of pizzas or a mole of tomatoes or a mole of anything else. Um, however, in chemistry, when we use it, we're typically referring to some sort of particle, subatomic or atomic or subatomic particle, either an atom or a molecule or a proton or an electron. Okay, so this is called Avogadro's number. And in scientific notation, which you know how to do now, it's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. By the way, we never call it Avogadro's number. You'll hardly ever hear that name used in class, but you will hear, hear the word mole used every day, probably 10 times a class, we'll use the word mole. So we, we use that word to represent this number. So how much is a mole? So how much is that number? Well, imagine you had that number dollar bills and decided to lay them end to end and side by side. How much area would they cover? Why don't you take a guess at that? How much area would they cover? Would they cover all of Hoover High School? Would it cover all of the city of San Diego? All of the state of California? You just took those dollar bills, you had 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and you laid them end to end, side by side. You're basically creating a carpet out of dollar bills. How much surface area would, would they cover? Would that number cover? Well, you see what's happening. They're covering the entire world. They would cover the entire surface of the earth, including the oceans, over and over again until the stack reached about 3,500 feet into the air. That's everywhere, from North Pole to South Pole, every ocean, everything would be covered in dollar bills, stacking 3,500 feet into the air. It's truly, it's truly an amazingly large number. Let's, let me give you another example here. If you could count $1 per second, how long would it take you to count your money if you had that many dollars? And just as a reference, the universe is believed to be about 14 billion years old. So this is $1 per second. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is counting a dollar per second. If you could do that with, with a mole of dollar bills, uh, how long would it take you to count those dollars? What do you think? Well, the answer is it would take over one million times the age of the universe to count a mole of dollar bills. So it's this in unbelievably large number. So we can think of an atomic mass unit as the mass of a single proton or a single neutron. We've talked about this. This is a slide from an earlier lesson. And so that's what we define an atomic mass unit as in this class. But why this number? Why that number? Why not some other really big number? Um, and why a big number at all? So let's talk about, first of all, why do you want this big number? And why did they pick this particular big number? So, if we have two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen, that's going to produce two molecules of water, H2O. The problem is, this is too small for us to see or weigh on a scale. You can't see or weigh two hydrogen molecules, or one oxygen molecule, or two water molecules. It's just too small. So we need to have a bigger number to work with. So if instead of just two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen and two molecules of water, instead we have two baskets of hydrogen and one basket of oxygen and two baskets of water, then we have a big enough 
uh, amount, a large enough amount that we can actually see them and weigh them. And we're going to say that each of those baskets has our magic number, the mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So instead of saying it, it requires two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen to produce two molecules of water, we can say it it takes two moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen, and two moles of water to produce two moles of water. So that explains why we want to work with a really big number. So we have enough atoms and molecules to actually be able to see and weigh. But it still doesn't answer the question of why did they pick that particular number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So here's the answer. A mole is the number of atomic particles it takes. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is the number of atomic particles it takes to convert from the mass in atomic mass units to mass in grams of a substance or compound. So take hydrogen for example. One hydrogen atom has an atomic mass of 1.01 .01 AMU. That's actually an average and you get that straight off your periodic table. So if you have one hydrogen atom on average, its mass is 1.01 .01 AMU. That's just uh, basically a little more than one proton. It's basically the mass of one proton. Okay, one mole of hydrogen has a mass of 1.01 .01 grams. Notice that the number is the same, 1.01. .01. The difference is the unit of measurement, atomic mass units AMU versus grams. Why is that significant? Because we can be working with the same number but the units of measure are units that we are able to work with in our world. We can work in the world of grams. That's what our all of our scales measure things in is grams. So you retain the same number 1.01 .01, but you switch from atomic mass unit to grams. So one hydrogen atom times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd equals 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen. So the mass of one mole of any substance is called the molar mass. So this is, this is really important to understand is that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is the only number that will make that conversion from a certain number of atomic mass units, 1.01 .01 in the case of hydrogen, to that exact same number of grams, 1.01 .01 in the case of hydrogen. If you had picked that other big number that I was talking about, 1 times 10 to the 20th, it would have converted 1.01 .01 AMU to some weird number of grams something that's not exactly the same number. Only 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd makes the numbers come out exactly the same. And this will be true for any other element. Carbon has an atomic mass of 12.01. The most common isotope of carbon has, an, has a, a mass number of 12. That's carbon 12 six protons, six neutrons. So if you had one carbon atom, it would have a mass number of 12 atomic mass units. But if you took a mole of carbon-12 isotopes or atoms, you would then have 12 grams of carbon. So exactly the same number, 12 and 12 in both cases, but one's in atomic mass units, one's in grams. And only this magic number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, will make that conversion from a certain number of AMU to the exact same number, but in grams, uh, only Avogadro's number or a mole will do that. So what is a chemical formula? If a number appears in front of a chemical formula, it means that there is more than one molecule or formula unit of that formula. So we've kind of, we've dealt with this before. So 2H2O means there are two H2O molecules. This means that there's four hydrogen atoms total and two oxygen atoms total. If you have two water molecules, you have a total of four hydrogen atoms. So we did this balancing equations and two oxygen atoms total. If you multiply these by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, then 2H2O means that there are two moles of H2O. We really don't want to talk in terms of molecules. They're just too small for us to work with. But we can work with moles. That's these big baskets of, of uh, molecules. And so 2H2O means that there are two moles of H2O. So it can either mean molecules or it can mean moles. We want to assume it means moles for our practical purposes. So this means that there are four moles of hydrogen. That's four 
times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms and two moles that's two times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms so let's just do a couple conversions here so the the atomic mass of a molecule or unit cell is computed by adding the atomic masses in moles this is the same number but measured in grams so if you went got your periodic table out and you wanted to know the atomic mass of a water molecule you have two hydrogens that's 1.01 and 1.01 you get that straight off your periodic table right below the H for hydrogen and then for oxygen go over to oxygen it's straight off the periodic table it's 16 and that's a total of 18.02 atomic mass units and that's the mass of a water molecule but if we want to deal with a mole we use exactly the same numbers and that gives us 18.02 but that's in grams so if we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules that would give us 18.02 grams and that's something that we can actually measure on a scale and see with our with our eyes we don't need a microscope to see 18.02 grams of water or one mole of water okay here's another one here's methane so if you have more than one mole you simply count the number of moles of each type so again we can talk about that in terms of the particular atom so 2 CH4 that's methane means you're gonna have two carbons and two times four or eight hydrogens again you get the numbers straight off the periodic table except now instead of thinking of them of them as atomic mass units we think of them in terms of grams those masses we're now going to talk about in terms of grams something that we can work with in our world so the mass of 2 CH4 moles is 32.1 grams and that's something that you can actually weigh on a scale okay let's do an exercise here with water so I'm gonna have you do some of these tables uh, for your assignment today and I want you to just compute how many uh, moles or grams of a particular substance you'll need to make um, a certain amount of each molecule it's kind of like cooking class okay um, if you want to um, bake a cake and you need two cups of sugar and three eggs uh, that's how much it takes to bake a cake two cups of sugar and three eggs what if you want to bake 10 cakes then it requires 3 times 10 or 30 cups or, excuse me 2 times 10 or 20 cups of sugar and 3 times 10 or 30 eggs you have to scale everything up to the number of cakes you want it's the same thing here so we're gonna figure out what it takes for one molecule of water and then we're gonna scale it depending on how many uh, molecules or moles of water we want to make so complete this table so the elements to make water are H O and then what they produce is going to be the last line that's H2O that's the water so how many atoms or molecules in the case of the first two its atoms of hydrogen do you need well you need two how about oxygen you need one how many water molecules is that going to produce now don't make the mistake of adding two and one it's going to make one water molecule with that think of it like this if you want to make a bicycle you need one seat and two wheels to make one bicycle not to make three bicycles so two one produces one water molecule now what's the atomic mass you get this straight off the periodic table two atoms of hydrogen times 1.01 from your periodic table equals 2.02 atomic mass units for oxygen you need one of those times 16 equals 16 atomic mass units now you do add these together because the total mass of a water molecule is the total of those two added together and that's going to give you 18.02 atomic mass units so now instead of two atoms of hydrogen we want two moles so under the moles column we just put a two that's what we want for oxygen we want one mole so we just put a one there and for the water we just put one mole now a mole could have been defined as anything and we could have just said well uh, two, two atoms of hydrogen times a mole is going to give me two moles. One uh, atom of oxygen times a mole is going to be one mole and same with the water molecule. That's not where the significance. The significance of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is this last column here. And I'll explain the red box in just a second. So in other words, if you want to know the molar mass 
of the water needed to make a mole of um, of water, the molar mass of the hydrogen needed, it would be not 2.02 .02 AMU, but 2.02 .02 grams. Again, the number stays the same, 2.02. .02. It's the unit of measure changes to grams, and that's what we use in the laboratory. What if instead in chemistry we didn't work with grams? What if we worked with pounds? That's another kind of measure of weight, just like grams. What if we worked with pounds instead of grams? Well, there would be a different number for a mole, but there would be a number that would convert from atomic mass units to the same number of pounds. It just wouldn't be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, here we go. So for oxygen, it's going to be 16 grams to make one mole of water. And that means the mass of one mole of water is going to be 18.02 grams. So what this means and what that red box symbolizes is that for, look at the last two columns only. To make um, one mole of water, you need one mole of oxygen, you need two moles of hydrogen, you need 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen, to make one mole of water, you need 16 grams of oxygen to make one mole of water, and one mole of water will have a weight or mass of 18.02 grams. By the way, in chemistry, we can treat the words weight and mass as meaning the same thing, molar weight, molar mass, atomic weight, atomic mass. In physics, you've learned there's a difference between the two, but we're not going to make that distinction in chemistry. You can call them either one, but we tend to call them mass because it's more precise. That's what it is. So let's answer some questions. This is just like cooking. Again, you know you have a recipe to bake a cake, but you need to bake five cakes. So what are you going to have to do to all the ingredients to make five cakes? You have to multiply them by five. What if you only want to make half a cake? Then you'd only need half as many ingredients as it takes to make one cake. And that's all we're really going to be doing here. This is really cooking class, okay? So let's answer some questions. How many grams is three moles of H2O? So you see that one mole of H2O, again, only focus on the last two columns. One mole of H2O is 18.02 .02 grams. So if you want three moles of H2O, you're going to have to multiply 18.02 .02 times three, and that will give you your answer. So there are three times 18.02 .02 grams of H2O equals 54.06 grams of H2O in three moles of H2O. Now, something I want you to notice here, and I'm going to be really picky about this. When you do chemistry, you don't just write numbers down. You write the number, the unit of measurement, and what substance. The substance goes in parentheses. It's critical that you do this or you're going to get lost in these problems. You've got to know what you're talking about. So grams is a unit of measure and the substance in this case is water. Then you need to write that every time you write a number, uh, every time you write a number of something, whatever the substance is. Okay, let's keep going. How many moles of hydrogen are needed to make four moles of H2O? So let's look up above. For every mole of H2O, again, one mole is in that red box, you need two moles of hydrogen. That's up under the moles column in the hydrogen row. Two moles of hydrogen. You need twice as many moles of hydrogen as you want to make moles of water. So if you want to make four moles of water, that's four times one, you're going to need four, mole, four times two moles of hydrogen. That's eight. So four times two is eight moles of hydrogen are needed to make four moles of H2O. However many moles of H2O you want to make, you're going to need twice that many moles of hydrogen. Okay, number three. How many moles of oxygen are needed to make three moles of H2O? Well, you can see that for every mole of H2O, you need one mole of oxygen. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. So if you want to make three moles of H2O, you're going to need three moles of oxygen. So there are three times one equals three moles of oxygen are needed to make three moles of H2O. Again, unit of measure in this case and in the in number two also was moles. And then you have to have the substance in parentheses after that. Both of those, unit of measure and substance. Number four, how many grams of oxygen are needed to make three moles of H2O? Well, let's, again, everything in the last two columns is referenced to one mole of H2O. So one mole of H2O requires 16 grams of oxygen. Be sure you understand why that is. That's the molar mass of oxygen required to make one mole of H2O. So if you want to make three moles of H2O, you have to multiply three times 16 grams. You'll need three times as much. So there are three times 16 grams of oxygen equaling 48 grams of oxygen in three moles of H2O. Number five. 
how many grams of hydrogen are needed to make seven moles of H2O. So for one mole of H2O you need 2.02 grams of hydrogen. If you want to make seven times that much H2O you need seven times that much hydrogen. So that's going to be seven times 2.02 grams of hydrogen equals 14.14 grams of hydrogen needed to make seven moles of H2O. Okay, so that takes care of this lesson. So you've learned a few things. What is a mole? Why do we use it? So let's summarize. We need a really big number. We can't deal in the atomic or molecular level. So we need a really big number of atoms or molecules, a very standard number that we're always going to multiply everything by this really big number so that we have enough so that we have enough to be able to actually see them and weigh them and just work with them in, in our real world here, not just in some theoretical world on paper. The reason they pick 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is because it takes the atomic mass numbers that you see on your periodic table and instead of talking about them being in atomic mass units, which is way too small for us to be able to measure or work with, it talks about them in terms of grams. That exact same number that's on your periodic table for atomic mass for any element, anything from hydrogen all the way up to uranium, you can just convert that into grams and that would be the molar called the molar mass of the substance. By weighing a substance and knowing what its molar mass is you can then figure out how many atoms or molecules of that substance you have and that's uh, really important in, in many aspects of chemistry and we're going to see those very shortly. Okay so that takes care of it and have a good day we'll see you in class.